So this video will be on setting up UAV Forecast. It's a popular app so I thought I'd just run through a few things with it. So the first one we'll click on is top left and it's just showing us what the weather's like so it's just cloudy. So that's the first one okay it's really exciting that one. So the next one is the middle one and this is your sunrise and sunset times and if you wish to use a 24 hour clock for this or not okay it can be handy for some locations. Now we'll move to the temperature one. Now temperature is an interesting one. You set your maximum and your minimum okay now just bear in mind that as winter comes once you get to sort of four degrees to like minus two minus four that's the point where icing can occur on your props in freezing conditions moisture in the air and what happens is it distorts the aerofoil shape of your propeller so you'll see your aircraft starting to descend no matter how much power you give it you're, it won't matter you're just going to land okay so just be aware of that for winter flying it's one of the more important things to watch what temperature can you fly in the coldest i've ever flown in is minus 15 in kazakhstan yes that was cold but it's not like uk cold that's damp it's just very cold okay so just set that up how how you want but I would suggest sort of minus four is about as cold as you want to fly in and be aware of icing. It can cause you an issue. Now we'll cover the next two under the same bit here. So we're talking about wind speeds and gust speeds. So wind speeds, what wind speed can you fly your drone in? Right, go to the manufacturer's website. It will tell you clearly what wind what wind resistance they have rated the aircraft to. And if it's 10 meters a second, then you take that, you put it into Google, you go 10 meters a second, two miles per hour, and you convert it across. It'll come up about 22 miles per hour or something close to. Just stick to what the manufacturer says. You'll see people going, well, I flew in 35 mile per hour winds and I got my drone back, but when it was coming back into head wind, it really struggled and I had to put it in sport mode. Yeah, because you fly in at the absolute limits of what it can take. If you have set your aircraft settings correctly and you accept that it's about 24 mile per hour is the maximum wind speed, that's it. You don't fly in 30, okay? The reason why people lost so many Mavic 1, uh, the Mavic Mini 1, was because they didn't stick to its maximum wind speed and went out and flew it in high winds. It's clearly all over Facebook. People haven't got a Scooby, okay? So with wind speeds, look it up and set it accordingly. It's that simple, okay? It really is. Just, just don't overdo it because you'll just push your risks and you'll end up losing your aircraft. The next one we have is the wind speed direction. You may need to know this, but basically it's just telling you which direction the wind is coming from, okay? And it's that's it. Then we have the chance of rain or precipitation. You can see that I've dropped it to 30%. The app standard setting is 40%. You can also use other weather forecasting apps and rain today to see what's actually going on in real time. Okay, but set it where, where you feel it's best. Okay, like I say, mindset to 30 now we have cloud cover, the next one. So cloud cover, and this will tell you if you're going to have a sunny day or not, or hit and miss. It can be a good guide. Um, you know, if you've got a lot of cloud cover, you know, is it a really good day for getting out and getting some photos and video? Um, but also check out other main weather forecasts as well. And that's the cloud cover one. Now the next one we have is all about visibility. And this is how far you can see on the day with the naked eye. You want to be able to see a minimum of five kilometers. And the reason why you want to be able to see five kilometers is because when you're flying, you can look around and you can see if there's another aircraft approaching where you are. So you can take the required action to avoid it. And that's why you want to be able to see five kilometers. Although you're only flying 500 meters from yourself, the legal distance, you still, if you can hear something and see something, you can take the appropriate action if required. 
Now the next one, this one's the interesting one. This is visible satellites. This is where a lot of people go wrong. It's either what the device is seeing or thinks it should be seeing from the satellite options you've selected and then at time scales where they are in the sky. This is absolutely pointless to go with this as a guide of any kind. What you do is you turn on your drone and you see how many satellites it's going to pick up. Do not rely on UAV forecast for this information and let it stop you from flying. Turn on your aircraft, turn on your app, see how many satellites you're getting. Okay, I do not use this at all in the app. To me, I consider this a pointless feature. Okay. Now, our next one's an interesting one. It's the KP index. Okay, so this is any kind of solar flares um, causing us sort of interesting issues on the planet. Um, and it can mess with GPS a bit. However, it's not yet ever stopped me from flying. Even if there's a heavy solar activity, high KP, I will still fly. The reason I still fly is I make sure that I'm happy to fly in no matter what what the mode is. I don't need GPS to fly. If I'm coming out of GPS, I can still fly. Okay, if you're a new flyer, you may want to be aware of it. If you're not used to flying in ATI, you may want to just think about it before you fly. Okay, but set it accordingly to your skill set. Okay, so this one is the satellites that are locked into the device you're using allegedly. Again, completely pointless. Turn your drone on and see what it's telling you in the drones app. To me, this is absolutely no good at all to you. Trust your drone, not this app for that check. Okay. Now, we do have a couple of options along the bottom, and one of them is the local weather forecast where you're flying. Now, it gives you one day, or 24 hours should I say, forecast. Okay, which is okay, so 24 hours is fine. Now, People go, but I want to see a bit more, you know, into the future with weather. Well, that's dead easy. Download the Met Office app for weather checking. You can pay for it through UAV forecast. But to be honest, why? When it's free, you can use BBC's website, you can use the Met Office. You know, there's so many. There's AccuWeather. There's so many weather choices apps that are free. Don't pay for it. If you want to know further out, just download another app. Okay. And finally, along the bottom, we have the so-called no-fly areas or airport warning areas. And as you can see in this shot, it is not showing us what we need to know in the UK. It's not showing you the flight restriction zones with the runway protection zones, so the runway stubs. If you want to check where you can or cannot fly, you know, use something like Nat's Drone Assist is the app to go to, okay? This is not the right app to be using for those checks. So the map is really not really worth using in that respect. Okay, use NAS Drone Assist. Right, hopefully that bit of a guide on how to set up UAV forecast. The important bits are learn to check up what your aircraft can fly in, weather conditions, input it into the app. Okay, you can ignore the visible satellites and satellites locked in. You can ignore those two settings, but hopefully, guys, um, that gives you a guide to UAV forecast and what you should be setting up. Okay, right, take care, safe flying, everyone.